Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy Human Club. I'm Soph Mosca. I'm the host of this podcast and I want to apologize because I did miss last week's upload, but I'm going to upload this week for you guys and then we'll get back to the bi-weekly. Hopefully I do have some travel plans that I'm going to talk to you guys about, but I think we'll still be able to do it. But hi, welcome back. Or if this is your first time listening, hi, thanks for listening. We have a fun episode today, very lighthearted, probably pretty quick, but I still wanted to do it. I wrote this like three weeks ago though, and I still, or I made this list, I should say three weeks ago, and I haven't looked at it since. So we're really just going to be doing it together, to be honest. But before we get any further, I just wanted to plug my social media. I'm just at Soph Mosca on every social media platform, except Snapchat is S-O-P-H-E-R-R-R. I feel like I am like out of practice right now with like filming and, and recording this podcast because I haven't vlogged in like over a week, I think, because I was, or I am pretty ahead with vlogs, like two weeks ahead. And this past week, my sister was in town. So I decided to take the week off of like vlogging and making more like new vlogs. And so because of that, I feel like, like when I was vlogging earlier before I started this, I'm like, what am I saying? And right now I'm like, what am I even forming real words? Like, I'm not really quite sure what I'm even what's coming out of my mouth. Like, I feel like it's not, they're not cohesive thoughts, but (laughs) regardless, we're going to record this episode because I do today's Thursday. So you're going to be hearing it literally tomorrow. And I want to get this up for you guys. I don't want to miss two weeks, but anywho, I have a fun episode today where we're going to be talking about random things that I think everyone needs. And this list is very random. Like very random. So I'm excited to tell you guys about it. There's 20 things. Um, and yeah, we'll just like get into it, but I do have some upcoming travel that I'm really excited about. I'm also, okay. My thoughts really are all over the place right now. Bear with me, but I'm drinking an Americano. I am making, or I decided that I need to start making my second coffee at home, at least most days. And I went in depth about like why (laughs) on my YouTube video that I'm filming today also. So I don't feel like explaining it here as well, but it's basically in an effort to find myself again, because maybe I'll do a whole episode about this, but I've like, things have been rough mentally and I haven't brought it to really social media much like I have in the past because of how kind of dark it's been um (laughs) cute yeah no it's it's been like it's been scary to say the least so I've decided to like mostly keep that off of social media but I do kind of want to like as I've started to like kind of get a grip a bit more um I've been feeling I, I don't know I talked about it in my vlog So just watch that. Or actually, I would like to do a podcast episode about it, but I need to like collect my thoughts more before I do that, which leads me to say, so my travel plans coming up, I'm very excited. I, again, in an effort to find myself and like, like just, I don't know, collect myself. I don't even, I don't even know you guys. (laughs) Literally don't know. But I decided that I needed to take a solo trip somewhere, but I'm, I'm going alone and I just... My plans while I'm there are like to literally be with myself and with my thoughts and stop avoiding things that are hurting within me or things that are making me sad or mad or just everything that I've just been shoving down and pushing away, which is causing me to just like entirely dissociate and like lose my sense of reality and my sense of myself and my drive, my will and all that. Like I need, I need to figure it out. And so I decided something fun that I wanted to do was I wanted to take myself on a little trip to Hawaii, especially now I live so much closer than I ever have. So I'm like, I need to take advantage. It's my favorite place ever. And I'm just, my plans are, I'm going to go grocery shopping when I'm there and make a lot of my meals at home. I'll eat out like a couple times at my favorite places, but I just want to like literally exist. Like I'm not looking for like a wow factor or like a ton of excursions. Like I'm literally going to go grocery shopping and get my groceries. I'm going to go on long walks. I'm going to sit on the beach and journal and read and think and cry and 
you know, like all that. I have plans to see maybe a couple friends. And then I also have a really exciting tattoo appointment while I'm there. Um, but yeah, just literally it's, I'm going to force myself to, um, be with myself (laughs) and secluding myself from really other people that could be good distractions from, from my thoughts or daily activities that put me in robot mode and make me avoidant of my thoughts. Like I've just, this is what I decided to do to like really force myself to feel. Um, but I am going to be vlogging, duh. So I think that'll be fun to vlog for you guys. And the reason I was saying that is because I maybe, I don't want to make any promises. Cause like I said, this trip is like supposed to help me not stress me out. But if I'm feeling it, I would love to record a podcast episode there and just sort of talk about how I'm feeling. So we'll see if I end up doing that. We'll see what the vibes are. But as of right now, I think that sounds like it could be a good and fun and healing idea. Super excited because literally a couple days after that, like I'm coming back and repacking essentially. I'm going to West Palm just for literally three days for Bree's birthday. I would go for longer, but one, I don't want to leave long. Longy. Yep. I don't want to leave Augie any longer because I, since I'm going to Hawaii, like literally right before Florida, he's just going to be with his sitter, which he loves his sitter. He's with like a bunch of other dogs. It's like a husband and wife. They're the best ever. They take them on like hikes and whatever. Best dog sitter ever. I'm obsessed with them, but he's already going to be there for like over a week. So I didn't want to extend my stay in Florida much longer than three days. And then also like Brie and Maddie both work like full time. And so they have to work. So I am going to only be going for three days. But what's exciting is I get back from Florida. And then I think my mom's going to visit the end of March. And then April, I will be going to um, home to New Hampshire to celebrate my niece's birthdays. And then May, I'm going to be going back to Florida for Maddie's birthday. Then June is my birthday. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. I really want to go to Italy, but I just recently found out that I'm pretty sure I'm going to Europe in July. So if that's the case, I don't know if I'd want to do that in June too. So I don't know what I'm going to do for my birthday, but it's my 25th birthday. I want it to be fun. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And then whatever. Anywho travel plans coming up are exciting so looking forward to all of that giving me something exciting to focus on and not like dwell so much on some things that are like heavier in my life at the moment so yay that's awesome but anywho that's besides the point i think we should go ahead and jump into the list i made of random things i think everyone needs okay very first one Also, wait, let me just preface, like, I'm not claiming that these are, like, one of a kind or, like, no one knows about them. Like, they're all very just, like, day-to-day, like, basic things that, like, I feel like a lot of people probably already have. But regardless, I need to share how important they are to me. So, the first one is a lemon squeezer. It sounds obsolete. It sounds pointless until you have one. And then you're like, wait, this is life-changing. Because... You can easily squeeze a lemon, like that's fine. But what gets annoying is like the seeds that pop out. And it's just one of those things. <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous, like raving about a lemon squeezer. But it's one of those things where you don't know how much it would improve your quality of life until you have it. Like it's really a simple luxury in life to not have to pick out the lemon seeds out of your whatever. And then also like to not have to get your hands all citrusy and lemony. It's just a nice thing to have. And they last forever. You can use it for limes. You can use it for oranges. Like, well, maybe not oranges because they're probably bigger than the, okay, you can use it for clementines. But it really just is so game changer. It makes things so easy. And it's just one of those things where like, I feel like everyone could benefit from a lemon squeezer. So definitely that's random things I think everyone needs. That's definitely one of them. Number two is a candle wick cutter. This is so important. And I didn't even know about this until like a few years ago. And now I'm like forever changed. So like, 
You know how when you light a candle, this feels really silly. I'm like second guessing this episode because I'm like, why am I raving about these simple things? But whatever. So, you know, when you light a candle and it's just like so smoky and the flames are huge and you're like, okay, this is literally going to set my house on fire. All you need to do is cut the wicks and you could also just use scissors. Sure. But I will say I've cut wicks with scissors and it doesn't snip as nicely as the candle wick cutters. Like it's like they're sharp and like made specifically to cut the wick. So it just makes your candles burn so much nicer because every time I light them, I cut the wick down and then they, they, the flames are beautiful and perfect every single time. No gross smoke, which is also really bad to breathe in. Well, candles are bad for you in general, but one thing I will not give up unless you tell me it's literally actually for real directly, like not like indirect, not hypothesized, but like it is killing me, then I would stop. But like, I know that lighting candles aren't like the best for you, but I will not stop until I'm told that it's like my cause of death. You know what I mean? Um, but when you, when you cut the wicks, it makes the candle less smoky, the flames less crazy, and it's just really helpful. You really need, it's also really cute. It's like decor, but also useful. Everyone needs one. The next thing is slippers. I'm wearing them right now. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm showing you. <laughs> I've talked about these a bunch. These ones I'm wearing are the brunch, the brand brunch slippers. They're so comfortable. And I don't know why I ever like didn't have them. And there's something that like I never bought. Cause I was like, I don't need slippers. Like I'll just wear socks. I always just wore socks. And then literally brunch sent me these slippers and it changed my life. And now I will forever be a slipper person. My feet, you guys, I know I've talked about my slippers before because I'm like, their biggest fan, but my feet are always cold. So are my hands. Like I'm just like, my feet are cold. Plus like I have rugs in my room, like, or in my house, like I have area rugs, but I don't have any carpet. And so the floor gets cold. Like my feet get chilly and it wasn't like, okay, my Tampa apartment, you could literally have the whitest socks, slide your feet around. You wouldn't even have a speck on them because my Tampa apartment was like, it was just beautiful. It was brand new and they must have like deep cleaned it before I moved in. And then I kept it really clean. So that thing was like so clean all the time. But like this place, when I moved in, had a lot of construction dust because it had just been renovated. And so like the floors were very dirty. So I like can't walk around with white socks as much without like getting dirty. And I actually hate white socks. I've talked about that before or not. I don't hate white socks. I love white socks. I feel you guys like I'm not talking. I don't feel like real right now. Wait, <laughs> guys, I'm scared. I know I'm laughing, but like I'm like scared. I'm like not here right now. Okay, wait. Whew, let me like ground myself. I'm looking around at my surroundings. What do I see, feel, and hear? Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I'm gonna title this episode for me having a mental breakdown without knowing. Okay. Wait, guys, I'm freaked out. Okay. Um, so anyways, house slippers are great. Oh my God. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, I was saying I don't like dirty socks. So slippers prevent that. Keeps your feet warm. They're just super useful. And I think everyone needs them. <laughs> Next. I didn't think slippers would make me spiral. <laughs> Next thing on the list. This is like me being kind of funny. Like it's like, I know everyone can't have this or doesn't want it, but an Italian Greyhound. Like literally everyone needs an Italian Greyhound. They are the sweetest dogs. They, all they want in life is to be warm and loved and cuddled. And that's all I want in life too. So like me personally, me and Italian Greyhounds were the perfect match. Like Augie is my Velcro dog, like he, is there is a magnet inside me and inside him and we are always close enough to where our magnets are like attracting each other we are like he is never not right near me and i couldn't love it more i don't know if i ever talked about this but i if i am ignore me but i was on a walk with augie one time somewhat recently and this lady stopped me and she was like okay so i've always wanted an italian greyhound but are they Velcro dogs? And if you guys don't know what Velcro dogs means, 
Vel- if you don't know what a Velcro dog is, there we go. It's what they call like what people call dogs that are like always attached to you, like always have to be next to you, always have to be touching you. And Italian Greyhounds are most definitely Velcro dogs. I've heard that the girl dogs are not so much like that. The female Italian Greyhounds I've heard are more cat like and they're very independent and like kind of just like to like be near you but not like on you. No Augie like needs to be in my shirt, in between my legs, under the covers, touching me right next to me, laying on my pillow with me. Like literally he needs to be right, like literally touching me at all times or touching actually it just has to be somebody. Obviously like he, like it's, he does things where it's obvious like he's most comfortable with me, but he also will cuddle with anyone that is sitting and willing to cuddle. Um, but yeah, basically she was like, are they Velcro dogs? I was like, yes, like (laughs) absolutely. And she's like, see, yeah, I don't want that. Like I already had kids, like I don't need to do that again. And I was like, yeah, no, definitely not the dog for you. If you don't want a Velcro dog, because they are, they're attached to you. But regardless, I think everyone needs a Velcro dog because it's so healing. And like, there's times where I'm like walking around doing chores. He's following me everywhere. And I'm like, oh my God, this dog is following me everywhere. Like, it's like stressing me out. But then I'm like, okay, but it's so cute. Like no matter where I go, I always have his little feet behind me and he's always watching and he, he's always nervous about what I'm doing. And he's always just like so involved in me and like my life. And it's just like, I just love my dog so much. <laughs> I literally love Augie. Like I could not love him more, which also guys, let me just say, People um, have made some comments about his nails being too long. First of all, yes, they are long right now. It's been like about a month since he got them cut. But number two, like they're going to get cut soon. But number two, if you look up Italian Greyhound paws, they all look like that because there's no fur. So even when their nails are cut as short as they can be cut, they look like they have really long nails. So if their nails do need to be cut, they look very long and creepy. I promise you, I take such good care of my dog. Like I hate, I know like most of you know that, but like, I just need to like, for the people who are like being haters, that dog is so spoiled. Like I promise you, no need to fret. That dog is so spoiled. Like he's taken very well care of and very well loved. And I would do, I would literally die for Augie. Literally die for Augie. So I don't want to, I don't want to hear it about his nails being a little long. Okay. I'm going to get them cut. The sitter cuts them. Like I can't do it myself. He freaks out. It's easier when other people do it for me, which is totally fine. That's allowed. Doesn't make me a bad dog owner. So I've been waiting until he goes to his sitter, which I knew was going to be now. Like, well, not now, but like in a couple days. So everyone relax. But anyways, um, everyone needs an Italian Greyhound. I think it would really improve your life. So if you're looking for a dog, I highly suggest getting an Italian Greyhound. They are hard to house train. But Augie is, I did it with Augie. He has accidents sometimes, but like not pee, it's poop, which is like, in my opinion, easier to clean up than pee. And also he's so small, like it's really not a big deal. And I love him so much, so it's really not a big deal. And they're just the sweetest things ever. They're great with kids and other dogs and they're relatively quiet. Like he really doesn't bark that much. They don't shed, they don't stink. They're great, they're the best dog ever, so. Everyone needs an Italian Greyhound. Next is a solid bedtime and a morning routine. So I just find that like when I'm in a solid routine of like between these couple of hours is when I go to bed and between these couple of hours or actually no, between this hour and and like, yeah, basically like I try to go to bed within the same hour or so every night and I try to wake up around the same hour or so every night I mean every morning and then I try to have like my routines during the morning and night so like at night I make myself dinner then I go up I change I wash my face I go downstairs and make some dessert I scroll my phone or I read or I watch tv and then I make some tea and then I go up to bed, I drink my tea in bed and usually read and then I'll brush my teeth and then I get in bed and I go to bed and then I wake up in the morning 
and I brush my teeth and then I take Augie out and then I come in, I make my bed, I get changed for my workout. I have my Brazil nuts and my coconut cult yogurt spoonful. And then I take Augie on a walk to get, and then I get, and I get coffee on that walk. And then I come back, I eat breakfast, I work out, I shower, I get ready for the day. And then we start the day and then like the day will be different every day. But like I have my set nights and I have my set mornings. And not only does having that make me just feel like less stress, less, less overwhelmed, more like in control of like my life. So that like later in the day when like I have plans come up or like I'm doing stuff for work, like I feel like I've taken care of myself and I've like given, like I've had my me time, but also like I find that I sleep better when I am going to bed around the same time and waking up around the same time because my body gets like used to it. Like it's science. I don't, I'm not a scientist, but I know that like that's a thing. What is it like circadian, circadian rhythm? Is that right? When you go to bed and wake up at the same time, it helps your body like prepare for sleep better and then also like prepare to wake up better. And I really do find that that's the case. So I feel like everyone just needs their solid bedtime and solid morning routine, which can look different for everyone. But I just feel like everyone would benefit from having the set routine, no matter what it is, just making it the same and around the same time every day. I feel like it would improve everyone's quality of life a lot. Number six, oh my God, I stand by this. I feel like this is so important and I neglected this for so long, but... Pictures, like using pictures of friends and family, loved ones, whatever, as decor. Like instead of getting some random target picture and putting it on your wall, put a picture of you and your friends on the wall or put a picture of you and your family on the wall, like whatever. Put a picture of your dog on the wall. Whatever it is, like put it on the wall. Instead of pointless, meaningless art, put a picture that uh, that means something to you on the wall. And I love this. I feel like in my first few apartments, I didn't do that at all. And I felt like it was kind of tacky. I don't know why. I felt like it was a little bit like childish, like giving like college dorm a little bit. But now I'm like, no, because all I want is like my friends and family around me, especially because I live so far from like a lot of my friends and family. Like all I want is to be looking at my friends and family all the time. Right now, I'm staring at a wall on this, like I have this built-in desk um, in my office and I decided to make this side a picture wall. And I'm just looking at pictures of me and Michaela, a picture that my niece drew me, a picture of me and Kelsey, a picture of me and Brie, a picture of Brie and Kelsey. Like I just have my loved ones right there and it makes me so happy to see. And then like on my stairs, I have pictures of me and Michaela, me and my Tampa friends, me, Brie, Maddie, um, me and Augie. I just love it. I have a picture of me and Kelsey by the front door. I just love decorating. It makes me like with pictures like that. It makes me so happy. Also, that reminds me, I finally found some artwork that I love for my living room area and I ordered it and I'm so excited. I found an artist and oh, I'm so excited. Literally can't wait. So stay tuned for that. I'm assuming it'll take quite a while to ship because it was pre-order and I'm pretty sure it's coming from another country. So it's probably gonna take a fat minute to get here, but it's fine because it's so worth it. It's so beautiful. It's very pink, which I didn't expect. I thought it was gonna be, I thought I wanted more of like a blue um, artwork, but it went with pink. Okay, next. Everyone needs... Like the chili onion crunch stuff from Trader Joe's or just like a chili crunch thing. Oh my God, it's so good. I randomly just got into it like this past fall and now I literally put it on everything. You guys know I'm a big hot sauce girl and my go-to like spice to add to things is Frank's Red Hot. But lately, chili crunch has been stealing the show and I've been putting that on everything and it is so good. Like nothing else to say about it. It's just literally life-changing. I want to put it on eggs. Like I want to put it in the pan because it's oil, you know, like it's oil and, and chili flakes. So I want to put that in the pan and then cook my eggs on it. Mmm, that sounds so good. I need to try that. But yeah, everyone needs that plain and simple. Next thing is everyone needs the baggiest ugliest most stained ripped worn in parasol pants everyone needs them they there's nothing like them i have a pair of sweatpants you guys oh my god there's a f like a fuzz floating around you guys have seen me wear them i have a pair of black sweatpants 
that are from a, I got them in 2011 (laughs) at a dance convention called Shock the Intensive. I've had them since then and they, I've, they've been like my go-to comfy sweatpant since then. So we are talking over 10 years and they have holes on, in both of the pockets and they are the best thing I've ever owned. They're my favorite sweatpants. They are so comfortable. I don't know how they, like I must've gotten, cause I was like a pretty tiny little 11 year old. So I must've gotten them too big at the time cause they fit great now. So they definitely must have been, I think I remember them being really big on me and not really wearing them much when I was like that young. And then I think I got older and I just started to wear them. They also have like paint stains on them from me and my, one of my old best friends were making like, like in middle school or something, elementary, no, it would have been elementary school. No, middle school. Cause I was 11. Yeah. Middle school. Um, making like t-shirts with like puff paint and there's like puff paint on the pant. Um, <laughs> so like they've been through the ringer with me and I just love them. And I think everyone needs a pair of sweatpants like that. I feel like everyone has one. So if you have them, never throw them away. Like you literally need them forever because they are, they're your comfort pant. Like they're so cozy. Everyone needs, which leads me to the next one, which is like what I call a safe sweatshirt, which is a sweatshirt or like crew neck that is from someone that like means a lot to you, but it has to be unconditional. So like, For me, it's my dad. Like I have a Patriots crew neck. That's my dad's. I stole from him. That is my safe sweatshirt. Like it is the sweatshirt I put on when I'm sad or I need to rot or I just need to be as comfy as possible and feel as safe as possible. That sweatshirt will be going on. So it could be like your mom's sweatshirt, your dad's sweatshirt, sibling, maybe like a best friend. I don't know. I feel like that's not even like conditional necessarily. I mean, unconditional. It has to be unconditional. Like it's not the same as like a boyfriend, girlfriend. Like it has to be unconditional. Like it can never not mean something to you, if that makes sense. Like it needs to always be safe because you can't have it be like a relationship that could like leave your life because you know what I mean? It has to be like unconditional. Or maybe it's even a sweatshirt that you've just, maybe it's like the same as the sweatpants. Like you've just had it literally forever like that can work too but it has to mean something to you and like yeah and then you have your comfort safe outfit the baggy sweatpants that you've had since you were 11 and the safe sweatshirt and it's like your go-to rotting like ugliest version of yourself outfit great perfect everyone needs it next thing on the list is tea but specifically like an assortment of teas for every occasion. So like a ginger tea for your stomach, a peppermint tea for your skin, a sleepy time tea for bed, a raspberry leaf tea for cramps, like have a tea drawer or like a tea cabinet where you can go in and be like, "Mm, I have a stomach ache, ginger tea. Mm, I think I'm getting my period soon, raspberry leaf tea. Mm, I want some tea before bed, sleepy time tea, like chamomile tea get, you know, just start collecting teas for every occasion. I don't know. Lately I've been even making like an afternoon tea because I only have two coffees a day. I don't like to have more than that. And, but sometimes in the like late afternoon, I'm just like, Oh, I could really use like a flavored hot beverage. Tea is your best friend. There's so many caffeine free options. Like tea is so good for you. It feels so nice. Like it's so soothing going down into your stomach. I just feel like everyone needs a good tea assortment. I feel like everyone can benefit from it. Okay. The next one is the say beauty blush. I rave about this on YouTube every time I do my makeup, but I love that blush like no other. I've, I don't have really, okay. Except for the next thing I'm going to talk about. I don't have a makeup product that I'm like die hard fan of. Um, I have products that I really like, but I'm not like, oh yeah, that's the best product on the market. Like there's only two things I'll say that about. And one of them is the Say Beauty Blush, which, and then the next one, which is the next thing in this list is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. Both of those products, I will die on the hill of saying they are the best in their category. The Say, the Say Beauty Blush is the best liquid blush that there is. It is gorgeous. It stays on so well. It's formula. It feels so nice. Like it is great. Doesn't break my skin out. Best ever. 
the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter I've been using for years, years and years and years. There is no brow setter like it. And one of my main compliments I get in life is that my eyebrows look good. They don't look good when they don't have the setter in them. And when they do have this brow setter in them, I get so many compliments on my eyebrows. It is like literally the best thing ever. It is so good. And also a little tube of it lasts a really long time. Same with the same beauty, beauty blush. So both of those, everyone needs. The next one, I cannot stress this enough, floss. Like literally everyone needs to be flossing twice a day. I don't know if that's what dentists say, but that's what I say. (laughs) You need to be flossing, you guys. Like grow up and floss. I don't care if you're using a piece of your hair to do it. Because if like if you can't buy floss or you don't have access to floss, fine. Pick your hair out and floss your teeth. I don't care. Floss your teeth. Like literally floss. That's all I'm going to say. Everyone needs floss of some sort. (laughs) Please just floss your teeth. (laughs) Okay. Next one is a journal or a diary. And the reason I'm saying this is because I've finally gotten back into journaling. I was off my game for like a year and I finally gotten back to it. And I really realized like that's the only place where I can write completely unfiltered. Like even in therapy, I just feel like because you're talking to another person, it's just natural that you're going to like slightly adjust or slightly filter things you say or things that you're feeling, even if it's subconscious. Like I feel like it's just human to do that. But when it's your diary and you know, like literally this is never going to see the light of day. Like no one will ever see this. You can write the deepest, darkest, most fucked up things within your brain and just get them out. And it is so therapeutic. Like you can do anything in that journal or in that diary. Like you can literally say or write like anything. (laughs) And it is so therapeutic. I just feel like everyone, especially those who like are afraid of therapy or don't have access to therapy, like at the very least get a journal and write down what is inside your brain. Even if it's just like you scribble a little like black hole in the page, like you just like scribble because that's all that you can think, like do it. Like that's your safe space to do it. And I just feel like everyone would benefit. Like it doesn't hurt. The next one is everyone needs a comfort YouTuber or comfort podcast or comfort TikTok, I guess, that you can just go and watch when you just want to get your mind off things. Like for me, I have a couple of like food accounts on TikTok where I just like will go and just like watch them. It's just so therapeutic to me. And then I have like my comfort YouTubers and comfort podcasts that I've been watching for years and years that like have just been my go-to what I do when I want to get my mind off myself and my life. And I feel like everyone needs that. Like everyone needs that safe space on the internet to go and just feel good and feel calm and yeah that's that (laughs) not nothing more to say about that it's just I feel like everyone needs that it's like you have a little friend on the internet but it's like not but it is you know next one is everyone needs friends with common interests and what I mean by that is like so if you're like me and you move a lot (laughs) and you have to like you find yourself having to make friends or um, maybe you have a hard time making friends or something. I feel like the best thing you can do is like finding people who have common interests and doing those common interests with them. So even if you say you move somewhere and you're like, I can't find like a best friend here. Like you have your best friends, maybe in your hometown or whatever, and you like move, but you can't like every time you hang out with someone, you're like, they just don't feel like my best friend, whatever. That's Okay. But like find people who have common interests, like say you really like thrifting and you find this other person that you work with that also really likes to thrift, make that like your thrifting friend. Every time you want to go thrifting, go with that person or at least invite them. And then like they are your friend. They don't have to be your best friend, but you have this friend that you like, oh, like we go thrifting together. Like they're my friend. It's really easy to like bond with someone over something. So like if you both really enjoy coffee, like go and get coffee with this friend, like try different coffee shops or like thrifting, like I said, or like, 
how about dance? Like you go to dance with that person and like you share that common interest and then maybe it will blossom into like a really deep, awesome connection as a friendship, but maybe it's just surface level always, but at least like you have someone you hang out with and like the pressure of, oh my God, like I can't make friends. I don't have any best friends here. It kind of goes away because you can just be like, well, I have my thrifting friend. I have my coffee friend. I have my Pilates friend, whatever it is. And it'll just maybe make making friends a little bit less daunting and you'll start to notice like before you know it you have all these different friends that you can do different things with and it's fun helps pass the time helps life go by in a more pleasant way next one is one thing to look forward to every week so this can be as simple as like oh my gosh friday night i'm gonna order a sub i'm gonna sit on the couch it's gonna be so amazing or it could be like i'm gonna go and go on a walk with my friends or I'm going to see a movie with some friends or like with my girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, whatever it is. One thing, or maybe it's even like, I'm going to go to the beach tonight or tomorrow night and I'm going to just journal. Like just one thing every week to look forward to so that when things get hard, when emotions get heavy, when life feels awful, (laughs) You have that one thing and you're like, oh, but I can't wait for that one thing. Like for me, Friday nights, I've been getting Giada subs, subs from this place called Giada in LA. It's my favorite ever. And a lot of weeks, that's been what's getting, that's been what gets me through. That and my Saturday night heels class. Like my brain sucks. I feel like everything in my life is hard right now. And my brain really fucking sucks right now. And I... I'm just like, ooh, but Giada. Like, I can't wait to have Giada on Friday and I can't wait to go to Heels. Like, that's gonna be so fun. And I just like focus on that. And like, I have to get through the week because I have to have my Giada sub and I have to go to Heels, you know? So just have that one thing that you can look forward to and like help you hold on to hope, especially in times where you don't have any because that's kind of what I've been going through recently. And genuinely that Giada Italian sub has been getting me through most weeks. And is that kind of lame and kind of shallow and whatever? Yeah, it's keeping me here and it's getting me through. So I'll take it. (laughs) Whatever it is, just let it be and look forward to it. Next one is like, pretty simple, but I feel like everyone needs a daily planner or at least somewhere where they can write down like a list, but like not their notes app. I don't know. I feel like writing is so much more satisfying and like crossing out things you've done is so satisfying when you can like actually write it. So maybe it's just a piece of paper. Maybe it's a napkin. Maybe it's like a notepad or maybe it is like a, like a formal daily planner. Make a list every day and like plan your day out. So just simply so that you can cross things out and like get that satisfaction of like finishing tasks and being able to cross things off the list. I feel like it's just like therapeutic. Next one, second to last is a tied to go stick. I haven't owned one of these in so long and my mom gave me one for Christmas. I forgot how great they are. (laughs) They really do get stains out, don't they? They really do do their job. I also randomly have been staining my clothes a lot and the tied to go sticks are getting stains out I never would be able to get out otherwise. It's great. So everyone needs to hide to go stick. <laughs> Pretty self-explanatory. And the last one, I don't even want to tell you guys because I feel like I have told you though, which is why I'm telling you, but I want to gatekeep this till the day I die, but I'll just tell you. The laundry scent beads, the downy ocean mist ones, and then the matching dryer sheets, the downy ocean mist dryer sheets, All I'm going to say is you need them and they smell impeccable and everyone is obsessed with how my laundry smells. So you literally need it. (laughs) Anywho, that is my list of random things. I think everyone needs some of them were physical things. Some of them were like things in life and whatever, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I feel like a little bit like that wasn't my best work. So I apologize if you didn't love this episode. I do feel like I'm a little bit scatter brained but regardless i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching or listening and watching today's episode and i will talk to you guys and see you guys so super soon in the next one bye